The way in which so-called nuclear power functions is by splitting atoms of uranium by shooting neutrons at them, which causes the atoms to split, divide and give off other neutrons and radioactivity and heat, which then in turn shoot into other uranium atoms, causing them to do the same. Now, uranium is a naturally occurring substance in many parts of the world, but it only becomes dangerous when you refine it, that is to say, when you remove the stones and soil and whatever, which dampens down the radioactivity and thus prevents a chain reaction. So in the natural environment, uranium could never pose a danger of immediate death from radioactivity or a nuclear explosion, simply because the material mixed in naturally with the uranium prevents the chain reaction. When you refine it to remove this material, it then becomes highly dangerous because the chain reactions now do occur giving rise to vast amounts of radioactivity, heat, which is then used to turn water into steam in order to drive turbines to produce electricity, and masses of so-called nuclear waste. Now, nuclear waste is a long list of substances which remain radioactive for periods varying from fractions of a second up to 30,000 years and more. Unfortunately, the most deadly, the most dangerous of these nuclear waste materials are those which have the longest span of radioactivity. Now from this diagram here, we can't really get anything like a clear picture of just how chaotic, how dynamic, how aggressive a nuclear chain reaction is. The film now showing gives you a better idea of how dynamic the process is in the sense that it is self-sustaining, but doesn't really give you any idea of how aggressive and how chaotic a chain reaction is. It was left to a chemistry teacher and his class at Cleveland High School to show us with the help of several hundred mouse traps and around a thousand ping pong balls just what a nuclear chain reaction looks like. Once started, there is no way known to science of stopping the chain reaction. And this is why at Fukushima, when the water which carried away the heat was no longer present, the nuclear piles actually melted through the floors of the reaction chambers, and even now are melting their way deeper and deeper into the earth producing massive amounts of radioactivity and nuclear waste.